This Beijing market sells nearly every electronic product you can think of, and many of them contain gallium and germanium, raw materials critical for the development of semiconductors. China is the world's largest supplier of both, and from Tuesday, foreign buyers will have to apply for licenses to purchase them. This seller says the move is fair. Is it right that China has this restriction? If we don't have countermeasures, America will continue to put sanctions on China. China should develop its own technology faster to make our country stronger. The export control is Beijing's response to wide-ranging U.S. restrictions targeting Chinese technology firms. The price of these raw materials has risen in recent weeks. Chinese analysts say Beijing is sending a warning to the United States by putting export controls on germanium and gallium. And this could just be the beginning of more restrictions on other critical raw materials. Multinational companies say they're being caught in the geopolitical crossfire between the two superpowers. Business confidence has eroded. There's uncertainty, there's a risk about it. Um, this, uh, any risk, any uncertainty is not good for business because it means that uh, investment decisions, employment decisions, um, they, they're going to be affected by this. Beijing says the move protects China's national security and does not target any third party. But state media say the U.S.'s defense industry is likely to suffer. Germanium and gallium are used in advanced radar systems, warships and ground installations. Washington says it also wants to keep American technology out of reach of China's armed forces. Where is the end, end point? Uh, the U.S. is in, 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 insistent that the China is a threat. They're trying to contain it. They're saying we're not going to let you have, quote, our technology. But it's not just U.S. technology. They're also going to Japan. They're going to Holland and saying don't sell China any equipment. In 2010, China imposed a ban on all so-called rare earth exports to Japan after a dispute sparked by a boating collision. If Beijing chooses to implement further controls, the price of countless devices, including smartphones, laptops and solar panels, could rise. Katrina Yu, Al Jazeera, Beijing. Well, let's get more on this with Mohan Yelashetty. He is Associate Professor of Resources Engineering at Monash University and co-founder of Critical Minerals Consortium. He joins us from Melbourne. Thank you very much for being on Al Jazeera. First of all, can you just give us a little bit of context to this? How big a deal is this and how much impact could it have? Yeah, thanks, Tom, for having me in, in the show. And uh, yeah, it's uh, lovely to talk to you. Yeah, as a Critical Minerals uh, co-founder, Critical Minerals uh, Consortium co-founder, we have been looking at all these uh, geopolitics and how the price escalations have happened in the past of various commodities. Uh, so, just to give a context, uh, a mineral is deemed to be critical when there is a risk of supply, mm -hmm. and such uh, a restriction or such a consequence, uh, uh, such a restriction would have enormous consequence. For example, to the number of industries. For example, gallium and germanium uh, are the two candidates that we are talking about. So they are required for a number of different uh, components, for example, from integrated circuits uh, uh, to laser diodes, light emitting diodes right. and solar cells. And uh, yeah, for a number of those uh, high tech industries, they are very, very crucial uh, ingredients. Yeah, so, so if they are restricted, I mean, what sort of impact is that going to have on manufacturing semiconductors in particular? Yeah, because as they are, in, in many cases, they are irreplaceable. For example, of course, uh, you know, there are, for example, if you talk about uh, solar cells, indium phosphate, uh, phosphide is considered as a, an alternative option, but there are, in a number of cases, the options are very limited in terms of, you know, which can substitute some of these important ingredients that go into manufacturing. One, uh, when you have uh, restricted supply, that means people have to pay price premium mm -hmm. to get uh, source these materials. That means the components and the finished products prices are going to go up. How Again, soon? How soon? Everyone an impact, is already. Sorry to interrupt. How, how soon could we see an impact on prices for for the everyday consumer? So 
Yeah, it, it does take a little while for these to be implemented, but uh, now that uh, China has decided in next uh, couple of days these restrictions are going to come into force, that means already uh, the struggling supply chains will further uh, become a bit, uh, bit more stringent in that uh, maybe, you know, uh, already mm -hmm. there's a short supply of these materials. So uh, anytime in the next couple of months, uh, people would uh, feel, feel right. the pressure of uh, the, the restric yeah. restricted supplies. As we heard from our, our correspondent just before, that this could be the beginning of restrictions. What else could China do? What else do they have up their sleeve, do you think? Yeah, if you look at the uh, majority of uh, the raw material supply chains, uh, irrespective of where they are mined, for example, if you look at the lithium, Australia produces about world's 50% lithium ore, right? Ore concentrate. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to China. About 90% of the downstream processing occurs in China. So that's where China has foresaw that, uh, you know, this is going to be the next boom. And then they invested heavily into these uh, processing industries and also uh, the, the supply chains. So if you look at uh, rare earths, today China controls about 60% of them. And right. likewise, uh, platinum group of minerals. Now, if you look at gallium itself, about 80% of their supplies are controlled by China and germanium, uh, about 60%. So majority of the stake of these supplies are controlled by China. That means, you know, people could uh, uh, feel a heavy pressure on uh, the supply chains in the, in the coming months. OK, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time and your insight. That is Mohan Yelashetty, co-founder of Critical Minerals Consortium. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.